we know that when we apply load to an object like steel, concrete or wood, and if we keep on increasing the magnitude of that load, at some point, the material will fail. For these materials, failure can occur in two ways, either brittle or ductile failure. In a straightforward case of uniaxial stress, the magnitude of failure can be measured through a tensile test and failure occurs when the normal stress reaches yield stress for ductile materials and ultimate stress for brittle materials. There are modules like the Moore Coulomb, Von Mises, and the Tresca to predict the failure for complex load conditions. But how do we predict failure for geomaterials like soil, which are made of discrete particles, non-homogeneous, affected by the prehistorical stresses and the water content? Well, predicting the failure of geomaterials is much less straightforward that we don't have one universally applicable method. Instead, we have to predict the failure by selecting the most suitable one from a range of different failure theories depending on the situation. My name is Chido Chashe. I talk about geotechnical engineering related topics, including but not limited to construction methods, disasters, and past, present, and future innovations in ground engineering. Please like and subscribe to the channel. With that, let's dive into the video and talk about soil constitutive models. Welcome to Geotex with Clements. So, how do we define soil failure and why is it important to understand the phenomenon? Well, soil failure can be defined as the point at which the soil is no longer able to support the load placed on it. The load applied on the soil varies depending on the structure being supported. For example, types of foundations ranging from roads, bridges and dams to even the self-weight of the soil in natural and excavated slopes and tunnels. As I alluded in my introduction, predicting failure with these varying load conditions is less straightforward. Therefore, geotechnical engineers have to select the most appropriate and suitable constitutive model from a wide range of models to analyze the failure mechanisms based on the load conditions the type and the characteristics of the soil and the availability and quality of experimental data. Soil is a yield criterion that is stress sensitive. In physical terms, this means the strength of the soil is dependent on the confining stress at that particular point. Let's say we take a soil sample under a building foundation. If we take a closer inspection, we see that the sample is subjected to a triaxial stress state with principal stresses sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. If all the principal stresses are equal, a condition known as hydrostatic pressure state because it resembles the stress state of an object submerged in a liquid. The sample does not experience any shear stresses. And therefore, we can calculate the hydrostatic components as the average of the three principal stresses. As the confining stresses increases, the soil particles move closer together, reducing the void spaces, therefore reducing the volume of the soil sample. This can be easily measured in a laboratory using a triaxial machine and reproducing a void ratio versus consolidation pressure curve. The E log P curve provides the elastic and the plastic characteristics of our sample. At the initial stage of loading, the soil sample exhibits elastic characteristics up to a certain point where it transitions into plastic deformations. The consolidation pressure value associated with this point is called the pre-consolidation pressure. This point shows the prehistorical highest stress state that the soil has been subjected to. 
The soil then transitions to plastic deformation. At this point, the soil will experience permanent deformations that cannot be retained if the confining pressure is reduced. However, if the soil sample is unloaded, meaning the reduction in confining pressure, the elastic part is recovered and it produces a line parallel to that of the loading elastic line. There are three important soil parameters that are drawn from this curve. The elastic and rebound parameter, kappa, from the elastic loading and unloading section. The pre-consolidation pressure, P, and the compression parameter, lambda, from the plastic loading section. Now, by increasing sigma 1, shape distortions will start to occur. The quantity of this distortion stress is called the deviatoric stress represented by Q, which is half of sigma 1 minus sigma 2. So our triaxial stress step can be decomposed into stresses which cause change in volume and stresses which cause shear distortion. However, unlike steel and wood, granular materials present a unique phenomenon when shearing. If we take a closer look, during shearing, the particles are shifting and rotating, therefore establishing a correlation of volume change that is contributed by the deviatoric or the shear stress. So, a good soil constitutive model should be capable of recreating the stress-strain relationship, the volume change, and the failure criterion of soil under different load conditions. A good example is the Cambridge clay model, commonly known as the Chem clay model, which was developed by Andrew Schofield and Peter Roth at the University of Cambridge and was further modified by Kenneth Roscoe and John Barland in the 1960s. This model is based on the concept of critical state soil mechanics which assumes that there is a unique relationship between the stress and the volume of soil at failure. The model can capture the essential features of soil behavior. For example, the dependence of strength and stiffness on the stress history, the dilatancy and the contractancy of the soil, and the occurrence of plastic collapse. On a PQ plot, the chem clay model is represented by a critical state line and a yield curve. The critical state line is defined by M, which is the stress ratio at failure Q over P at any point along the line, and it is governed by the soil's friction angle at critical state. The chem clay yield curve is represented by an elliptical curve and it is basically defined by the equation of the ellipse with the variables defined by the soil properties. Where Q is the deviator stress, P' prime is the mean effective stress, M is the critical state value of the stress ratio, and P' prime is the pre-consolidation pressure, which is related to the stress history of the soil. The inside of the yield curve represents elastic deformations, and the outsides represents plastic deformations. To demonstrate this, let's go back and modify our PQ plot by adding an axial and a volumetric strain axis. If we subject our sample to an initial confining pressure P0, then perform a triaxial shear test. We can observe that when the triaxial stress path reaches the yield surface, it corresponds with the end of the linear elastic deformation in both axial and volumetric strain curves. After this point, there is a transition into plastic deformation as the sample starts to show irreversible strain deformations. Notice that the yield surface expands with the stress path until it reaches the critical state line at which the sample is contracted and failed. This is called the strain hardening behavior of soil. On the flip side, when shearing the soil sample at low initial confining pressure, 
a different strain deformation regime can be observed. After the stress path has reached the yield surface, it reverses and moves down towards the critical state line, at which the sample will show signs of dilation or volume increase and failure. The yield curve will also shrink. This is called the strain softening behavior of soil. All in all, the governing equations that are derived from this plot are as follows. In their incremental forms, they can be implemented in numerical simulation methods such as the finite element method and analyze the nonlinear and time-dependent behavior of soils under static or dynamic, monotonic or cyclic, drained or undrained, isotropic or anisotropic load conditions for foundations, embankments, slopes, tunnels and excavations. This can generate contour plots to show the distribution of the camp clay equivalent stresses and strains at a desired location, as this allows the areas at risk of failure to be identified. I have been your host Chido Chashi. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can go ahead and watch my previous video on the geotechnics of landfills. Thank you for watching.